So I've, I've talked about trees being imbalanced, but I haven't really described what an imbalance actually means. And so one of the trees that we're going to look at are called AVL trees. The rule for an AVL tree is that the difference in height between left and right must always be less than or equal to one, okay? And if the difference in height is more than one, then there's a violation of the tree. So let me demonstrate an AVL tree and show you what I mean. So if we start with a four, yeah, the difference in height between left and right is zero because there's no children. Now if I add a two, I've got one child on the left and zero on the right, so that's okay, I'm still less than or equal to one. If I add an eight, I got one child on either side, that's okay. If I add a 10, now I've got one child on the right of the eight and zero children on the left of the eight. I've got two children on the right of the four and one child on the left of the four. So that's okay, I'm still in balance. And then um, if I add a 12, now I've got one child on the right of the 10 and zero on the left. I've got two children on the right of the eight and zero on the left. So my difference in heights at the eight is bigger than one. So I've got a violation of my tree. And the node that caused the problems is the 12. Okay? So to fix the violation, I rotate the grandparent. So 12's grandparent is the eight. So I rotate the grandparent and I do a left rotation. If I do a left rotation of the eight, I end up with a tree that looks like that. I've rotated the eight, the left, around the left of the 10 and I've used the 10 instead of the eight. Now, at the 10, I've got one child on either side, so that's okay. At the four, I've got two children on the right and one on the left, and so that's okay, all right? So I've restored balance to my tree. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I start this time with a 10 and I add an eight, everything's good. I add a 12, I'm still good. I add a four, I've got two children on the left of the 10 and one child on the right of the 10. Now if I add a two, now I've got one child on the left of the four, zero on the right of the four. I've got two children on the left of the eight, and zero on the right of the eight, and so I've got a violation of my AVL rules. My violation, here's my node that caused the problem, the two, it's in the left child's left subtree, so I have to do a right rotation of the eight, and so I'm gonna end up with the 10, I'm gonna put the four in place of the eight, I'm gonna have the eight and the two as the children of my four, and my 12. So now I've got one child on either side, I've got two children on the left of the 10, and I've got one child on the right of the 10. So my tree's happy. Let's take a look at one more example of an AVL tree. So I'm gonna start with a four, and I'm gonna add a 10. Everything's okay. I'm gonna add a two, Everything's still good. I'm going to add a 12. I've got two children on the right of my four. I've got one child on the left of my four. I'm okay. I'm going to add an eight. 
And so now I've got either two children going 4, 10, 8, or two children going 4, 10, 12, and one child on the left. So I'm still good. And now if I add a 9, now my longest path is going to be um, through 4, 10, 8, 9. Right? So in my 9, I've got one child on the right of my 8 and 0 on the left of my 8. I've got two children on the left of my 10 and one child on the right of my 10, so that's okay. I've got one, two, three children on the right of my four, and one child on the left of my four. Okay. So I've got a violation. The node that caused the violation was the nine. And if I go to the nine's grandparent, and ask what's going on, the violation is in the left child's right subtree. So the way to fix that is to do a left-right rotation of the 10. So to do a left-right rotation of the 10, the first step is a left rotation of the parent, which is the 8, okay? So I end up with my 4 and my 2. My 10 stays where it is. I do a left rotation of the 8, so the 8 goes around the 9. So 9 comes in the middle, and then 8 goes there. And then when I do that left rotation, I use the 9 instead of the 8. And now, from this step, I have to do a right rotation of the 10. So let me redraw that tree over here, just so that I can annotate it as we do the rotation. And I'm going to do a right rotation of the 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the 10 around the 9. And the 9 is going to go in place of the 10. Okay? And remember that ten, the 12 is 10's right child. When we end up after doing the rotation, the 12 is going to stay where it is relative to the 10, right? That doesn't move. The 10 comes down here, and the 12 stays as the 10's right child. So now we're going to end up with a 4, the 9, the 8, the 10, and the 12, and the 2 here, okay? That's the outcome of our right rotation of the 10. When we look at this tree, we've got one child on the right of the 10, zero on the left. We've got two children on the right of the 9, and one on the left. And we've got three children on the right of the 4, and one on the left. And so we've got a violation of our AVL rules. Now, the node that caused the violation is our 10. Here's our 10. That's the one that caused the problem. The 4 was quite happy. It was just hanging out, had its children. It was totally fine. The 10 comes along, does a rotation, messes everything up. So the node that caused the violation is the 10. And so the node that has to pay for it is not the parent, but the grandparent of the 10. The violation is in the right child's right subtree, so we do a left rotation. So we're going to do a left rotation of the four. So remember our rules for a left rotation. We set a temporary pointer to our node that we're rotating, in this case the four. We set a temporary pointer to the node's right child, and then we set node's right to temp's left. Okay, so let me just sketch that out. We start with this situation. We just set a temporary pointer to nodes right, and then we set nodes right to temps left. Here's our temporary pointer. Here's our 9, our 10, and our 12. And then we set 
Temps left to the parent that we're rotating. Temps left to here. And we use our temporary node in place of our parent. So after our rotation, we end up okay, like this. In this case, our 4 has one child on either side. Our 9 has 2 on the left. Our 10 has 1 and 0. And our 9 has 2 on the right. And so we've brought balance and harmony back to our tree, and everybody's happy. So sometimes when you do rotations to fix a problem, like in this case, that creates a new problem further up the tree. And as we'll see, when we're looking at the trees, whenever we do a rotation to fix the balance, we have to go all the way back to the root and make sure that the rotation that we did doesn't introduce a new problem further up the tree that we then need to go and fix. Okay?